This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Keep watching to discover a special offer that they're making available through my channel. A lot of self-proclaimed watch gurus like me have been skeptical about the production processes of fashion brands like Movement for years now. They seem to be rammed down your throat by every influencer under the sun. And when I reviewed their quartz watches a while back, I was far from impressed. I honestly thought they were rubbish considering the retail price. Nevertheless, since I last covered them, they were acquired by the Swiss Movado Group, whom produce a large range of other licensed fashion watch brands. Movement have released a string of wristwatches since 2018 that do look a bit less generic, including their first automatic watch named the Arc Automatic. It's the model a certain YouTuber sold his soul to promote a while back, claiming it was better than Rolex. Admittedly, I've been somewhat curious about that particular model for a while, hoping I can give them uh, some sort of second chance. However, I never grabbed one because I thought the price was really steep. In the UK, the Arc currently retails for £269, which is pretty expensive for a fashion watch. So I never bothered picking one up. Then a few weeks ago, I was browsing AliExpress as part of some research for a blog post on our site, and I saw something that looked pretty familiar. Right there in the search results was a movement arc automatic. Or was it? Well, it certainly looked incredibly similar, right down to the hands and even featured the same automatic movement inside. So that gave me an idea. Why not buy both watches and do a bit of a two in one video? Firstly, we can see if this new movement is any better than the garbage watches I reviewed previously. And secondly, we can work out whether you can potentially save yourself £200 and just opt for this alternative instead. I'll link both options in the video description in case you want to grab one for yourself. Let's get into delivery first because there's a few things that you definitely need to be aware of. As you might have guessed, both of these watches are made in China. The Cadison, which is the name of the AliExpress watch, that one's shipped directly to you from China using AliExpress, which is this big wholesaler. It's a bit like the Chinese Amazon, essentially, whilst this movement should come directly from their own distribution center stock. Somehow, the Cadison arrived in under two weeks, which is really impressive for a Chinese product, whilst the movement took a month to get here. And that kind of surprised me because last time I covered the brand, uh, as much as I didn't like the product, um, I did compliment the, the speedy delivery and the good customer service. Unfortunately, this time, there came a point where uh, truly I didn't think it was even coming. There were no notifications about delayed delivery when I made the purchase. There were no updates to the tracking to the extent where when I eventually did receive the watch, it still wasn't marked as dispatched on the site. And during the process, the customer system was about as useful as an inflatable darts board. And I think especially when you've spent almost 300 pounds on a wristwatch, this probably shouldn't be happening. COVID might cause some delays, but it's not nice to feel forgotten about. Nevertheless, I finally have them both here. The Cadison arrived in a very basic rectangular box with an unusual snakeskin texture. It's odd and could certainly do with some extra padding, but it's reasonable considering the retail price. After all, I only paid 69 pounds for this. The movement arrived in better packaging, as you might expect, with a padded cube housing the watch within. This does provide increased protection and certainly looks nicer. Regardless, you're not here for the boxes, you're here for the watches. I tell you what, the listings weren't lying. On the surface, both of these watches look extremely similar. I got this white and gray colorway for each to make it a more fair comparison, and at a glance, they do look like the same watch. Let's talk dimensions to start with. The Arc comes in with a 40mm width, 13.8mm thickness, and a 422 lug to lug. The Cadison is 1mm wider, 1.5mm thinner, and has a similar lug to lug length of just 43mm. With the supplied strap, the MVMT weighs in at a fraction below 60 grams, whilst the Cadison sits at just over 75 grams. Ultimately, on wrist, both watches wear very comparably. Due to the lighter weight and slightly narrower width, the movement perhaps feels a tad smaller. However, the crown juts out slightly further than the Cadison, which makes them feel even closer in size. For average wrists, both of these are going to wear very nicely, but I would say neither are the slimmest watches around. Even though the arc is thicker on paper, 
Part of that depth is also made up by the strongly domed crystal. So in practical terms, it feels just like the Caritum. Not only are these watches very similarly sized, but visually the cases look extremely alike as well. Both have a bulbous structure widening towards the top of the watch, and the lugs are very comparable in terms of shape and size. Both are mounted towards the bottom and are quite short and stubby. The MVMT features a primarily brushed finish with some alternating glossy rings, whilst its Chinese brother is housed in a completely chromed body. Despite the differing finishes, both watches are constructed of the same 316L stainless steel, which is the industry standard material used in most modern wristwatches, especially those around this sort of price. While the finishing appears marginally better on the movement, I'd say, uh, the steel used in the Canison feels slightly higher quality. It feels more dense, the watch does. Like, for some reason, there's less empty space in it. The crowns are similarly shaped and both feature emblazoned logos, though, as I mentioned previously, that in the arc protrudes more from the case. Personally, I prefer the tighter fit of that on the Caddison, as it looks slicker and tucks away, though both crowns seem to function very well with adequate grip on each. The resemblance continues through to the case rear, where both pieces feature a near-identical display case back. Both of these watches claim to provide 5 ATM or 50 meters of water resistance, which is adequate considering these are slightly dressier looking watches and likely aren't going to see much aquatic action. Stylistically, there are very few differences between these two cases. I probably prefer that on the Arc just because I tend to prefer brushed finishes. As you may have noticed when I showed the case rears, both of these utilize an automatic movement, and in fact both of these are fundamentally the same movement. The Caddison features the automatic standard Miyota 8215, whilst the Arc houses the 821A. The latter is functionally almost identical to the former, but features a decorated finish, including a scalloped texture across the support structure and a cutout rotor instead of a solid half circle. The movement in the movement certainly does look more attractive, but in terms of performance, you'll still get the same approximate 42 hour power reserve and accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day on each. Both of these also feature the same number of jewels at 21, along with identical hand winding capability. The 821A in the Arc does feature hacking if that is important to you, meaning that you can essentially stop the second hand in its place, whilst the 8215 in the Caddison doesn't. And while movement may have opted for the decorated version, the standard option in a watch retailing for a quarter of the price is much better value in my books. Most people out there simply won't notice the difference, especially when the watch is on wrist, because you can't even see it anyway. If you haven't experienced one of these movements before, it's also to be noted that the uh, rotors are quite audible in them. One area where you might notice more of a difference is in the crystals used. The MVMT has a piece of very strongly domed mineral glass, which instantly reminded me of that on the Orient Bambino. This will give some limited scratch resistance, and I think it looks fantastic, but I'd still rather opt for that on the Caddison. Indeed, the £69 watch is the one with the more premium sapphire crystal. I checked with the diamond selector just to make sure, and it gave a really strong positive result, so I'm confident that this is the real deal. This material gives you best-in-class scratch protection, and it's definitely my go-to when looking for wristwatches. In this case, the curvature is a bit more subtle than that on the movement watch, but it does still provide some nice distortion, especially at the steeper angles. I bet the reason that you clicked on this video is because of the dials, though. They really dominate both of these watches, and there's no doubt about it. This pair belong in Star Wars Attack of the Clones, because they're as close as it gets. Obviously, the logos are different. The Caddison is inked in black, while the movement text is silver. Outside of that, though, you have a, a near-identical dial arrangement and colour. The automatic text is in the same position, the date windows are the same, the indices are indistinguishable from one another, and even the hands are very similar too. Outside of the second hand, which is a touch shorter on the Caddison. Both models are clearly going for that minimalist Bauhaus style look, which is probably the most versatile aesthetic you can go for. To be honest, given the sheer visible similarities between these two watches, it wouldn't surprise me if Caddison have seen this movement design and then tried to replicate it to some extent. Well, to a big extent, as I think, to be fair, I think Movement came out with this design first. Nevertheless, I'd say the £69 Caddison looks just as good as the £269 Movement Arc Automatic, despite the huge price discrepancy. In fact, it even has a couple of extra bits that I like. 
Not only does this feature a curved dial, not found on the movement, but the lighter colored pips around the perimeter are loomed as well. I'm unsure what the purpose of these is, as no other part of the watch feature luminescence. But I guess more stuff is always appreciated. I do think both watches look pretty darn good. This arc, while nothing special, is clearly the best looking MVMT available in my opinion. I think most of their watches look boring and generic, whilst to be fair, this actually looks like at least some thoughts gone into it. Then you have the Canison, which just looks the same, but for much less money. And the surprises don't end there. Arguably the worst part of the movement quartz watches I previously looked at was the straps. While I'd rather have watches cut costs on the strap and leave the money for the rest of the watch, those leather straps were among the worst I've ever encountered. In fact, I think they set the bar. I was hoping that this £269 Arc Automatic would come with some that were at least usable this time, especially considering the huge jump in price. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be what's happened here. This strap is almost as bad as those I previously looked at. The leather feels incredibly cheap and dry. Straight out of the box, the band was heavily warped and creased. I even filmed it on camera to show you. I'm under no doubts this will look pretty bad pretty quickly, but at least it features quick release tabs so you can quickly chuck it out once it starts looking shabby. You also get the same 20 millimeter lugs on the Cadison, but the news is better this time. While the band is a similar gray color and is also constructed of genuine leather, it's immediately apparent that the quality is a step up. It's far from the best strap in the world, but it's much plusher, creases less easily, and features a butterfly deployment clasp to keep it in good condition for longer. Sure, it doesn't feature the quick release tabs, but altogether, it's certainly the better strap of the two. So I'm thinking of keeping one of these watches, but which will it be? Well, you can find out after this quick word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. They've got more than 25,000 video classes on graphic design, business, music, and so much more. I've been having some struggles trying to improve the product shots for our website and YouTube thumbnails. Great looking images are crucial to our business. So recently, I decided to further my knowledge by taking the fundamentals of DSLR photography class on Skillshare. Taught by professional photographer Justin Bridges, these concise, informative videos have quickly helped me to master some of the more advanced camera settings that I never dared to use before. To turn my thumbnails from looking like this to something more like this. The thing is, I know it's working too because I've seen how many more of you are clicking on our videos. Or perhaps you fancy yourself as the next big watch designer. Product designer Joey Roth has a great class on how to launch successful products, walking you through the steps from inception to manufacturing and marketing. You never know, you could even end up making something that looks even better than Rolex. In all seriousness though, if you're anything like me and you enjoy self-improvement and learning new skills, Skillshare is a highly valuable resource accessible for only a few pounds a month. In fact, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the video description will get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you can explore your creativity too. Well, I think from the title, my decision is fairly obvious. I have to say, I don't think this movement is a disaster by any stretch. In fact, it's probably the best watch they've made. It's a half decent piece that's got reasonable quality and it looks quite good, but the fatal flaw is the price. In my opinion, this needs to be a hundred quid cheaper for me to consider recommending it. Even with the meme of the year discount code, I think 230 pounds is still really steep, but at least it's still a somewhat of an improvement for the brand, especially compared to those others I looked at before. Perhaps they're finally on the right trajectory, who knows? That being said, this Cadison really shows them up. These are fundamentally the same watch as one another, apart from the Cadison has better glass, a better strap, and is one quarter of the price. They're even made in the same country, so why not cut out the middleman yourself, save 200 pounds in the process and get one of these from a Chinese wholesaler directly instead. I'll link one of these in the video description in case you're interested in picking one up yourself. Given the similarities, it's clear to me that the extra 200 pounds you're paying for this movement has nothing to do with the quality of the watch. And it's likely just going into feeding more marketing or lining some rich person's pockets. I'd love to know where on the wall of watches each of these watches should go. Are each of these low quality Chinese garbage? Uncool, cool, 
or ice cold? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe for more watch videos. I'll see you in the next one.